In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know to travel the north of Vietnam by motorbike. First up, let's talk about distances and why there are no set routes for the north. For driving south to north of Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, Hanoi, there is a fairly set route for travelers to follow and places to see like Mui Ne, Hoi An, Phong Nha, etc. But when it comes to the north of Vietnam, there are no itineraries to follow. So why is this? I will try to explain. The first point is that the north is mountainous and beautiful. One traveler might stop on every corner to take a picture, whereas another traveler might just enjoy smashing through mountain terrain. The kilometers covered by the two different styles is huge. For Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi routes, it doesn't matter if you are a fast or a slow traveler. The tourist destination at the end of each day tends to be the same. So whether the day takes you four hours or 10 hours, the slow traveler and the fast traveler will finish in the same location each day. For the north, there isn't really any set tourist destinations, just random homestays and towns dotted around the mountains. Therefore, when you are tired, you stop. You don't need to commit any further to the next tourist town. Therefore, the stopping location at the end of each day is different for the fast and slow traveler. They end up on very different itineraries. The second point is that the weather is volatile and variable in mountain terrain. It can rain at any time, there are also a lot of corners in the mountains. Rain drastically slows down your pace, especially when it comes to corners. So a traveler in the beautiful sunshine will cover a lot more distance than someone who has found themselves driving in the rain. Finally, skill level and bike model plays a large part in mountain driving. A confident driver on a big bike is going to go up hills and around corners much faster than someone casually driving on a scooter. Hey, is that chick again? Overtaken us like four times. <laughs> there are a lot of hills and corners in the north. Over a day, this will impact the driving distance. I have tried multiple times to plot out a standardized itinerary like I have for the south to north of Vietnam. But each time I get to the north, I realize this objective is never going to work. Let's talk about the weather in the north. The best season to travel the north is early May through to the end of October, with the very best being September and October. Rice paddies turn to gold and yellow and the weather is nice. After October, and especially around December and January, the north can be very cold, even snowing at times. When the north is hot, it is rainy season. When the north is cold, it is dry season. But just because it is dry season doesn't mean it won't rain. So in dry seasons, you risk getting wet and cold. In rainy seasons, hopefully you only get wet, but not cold. Weather is quite localized though, and you can find that committing to a drive through the rain will eventually lead you to sunshine. Mountains have different altitudes and conditions can go from hot to cold or dry to wet in a matter of minutes. Overall, the north is a bit of a gamble when it comes to the weather. You can't really predict it. You can find yourself driving through rain and clouds with no visibility and you won't see the gorgeous views that you came all this way to see. It's stunning out there, for sure. So the north is beautiful, but the weather is unpredictable. The south, for example, Ho Chi Minh to Da Nang, is less beautiful, but you will always find yourself with some sunshine. How to plan for the north. The best way to plan your route for the north is to have no plan. By that, I mean have a guideline, but don't keep to it. Both Tigit and Vietnam Coracle have routes available that you can follow. Just don't worry about where you're going to stay or how much of the route you manage to complete. In the end, a mountain is a mountain, a waterfall is a waterfall. Sure, some are prettier and more spectacular than others, but in the end, it doesn't matter. The key to enjoying the north is to travel at your own pace. If you find yourself spending half a day staring at a mountain thinking about the meaning of life, then this is great. If you come to the north to just drive for the sake of driving, then this is great too. Where things go wrong is when a traveler tries to see the best waterfall, the best mountain pass, the best road, all in one holiday. The weather doesn't play ball, itineraries become a mess, and life gets stressful. It doesn't need to be like that. There is no location in the north of Vietnam that is out of range of a one-day drive back to Hanoi. This is why it doesn't need much planning. When your time is up, you can drive your way back to Hanoi along a highway. 
In my eyes, the North is split into three sections. The Northeast, Haiyang, and the Northwest. Each section is roughly five to seven days driving. Five days if you're already in the North, or seven days if it is a loop from Hanoi. The Northeast is the easiest way in and out of Hanoi. So even if you are going to Haiyang, you will at least pass through Ba Bear Lake. The Northeast contains some nice views, Ba Bear Lake, some caves, and the star attraction is Banyok Waterfall. Haiyang is the most famous area of the north to drive by motorbike, and this is where I recommend you drive. The roads are pleasant, the views are amazing, and considering how remote it is, the tourist infrastructure is actually pretty good. Once you are in Haiyang, you need around four days to properly complete a Haiyang loop. Key attractions include Mapilang Canyon and Lung Ku Flag Point, but the area is just driving gold. A typical itinerary is Hanoi to Ba Bear Lake, Ba Bear Lake to Mio Vac, Mio Vac to Yen Min, Yen Min to Haiyang, Haiyang to Tuin Quang, however you pronounce that, and Tuin Quang to Hanoi. The Northwest as an area I consider to be Baka and Westwood. This would include Sapa and Lao Cai as well. The Northwest is the hardest to drive. The road conditions tend to be poor and gravelly. The tourist infrastructure isn't great either. By this, I mean the locals don't really know how to process foreigners. Accommodation can be rough and English is lacking. The border to China can be sensitive and you can be met with unfriendly attitudes. For the adventure seeker, this probably sounds great, but for the average person, this will be out of your comfort zone. In my opinion, you need to be a pretty hardened adventurer to tackle this region. The exception to the rule, of course, is Sapa, which is tourist central and Lao Cai, which is a big city. The reward for driving the northwest is that it is the prettiest area of Vietnam to drive, ET being just one of many stunning locations. Sapa is a bit like a theme park with many attractions to do, fancy pan, various waterfalls, trekking tours, etc. It is your standard mountain tourist hotspot. The northwest also contains my favorite road in Vietnam, the DT-153, which connects Baka to Lao Cai. Hopefully, we understand the three different zones, the northeast, Haiyang, and the northwest. You see, Hanoi to basically anywhere in the north is a one-day major road drive of admittedly not great driving. But Sapa or Lao Cai to Haiyang is also a one-day drive of admittedly not great driving. So if you decide to drive Hanoi to Sapa, this puts you on a one-day drive of not great driving and then a further one-day drive from Sapa to Haiyang, which is also not great. So you find yourself visiting the very touristy town of Sapa and committing to two full days of average driving before you even visit the beautiful part of the north, which is Haiyang. Further to this, if you venture further west of Sapa, you put yourself on very long average roads all the way back into Hanoi. And these roads can be debated to be out of reach of a one day drive to Hanoi. This is why careful consideration is needed when trying to connect Haiyang to Sapa. Most people who are on a roughly five to seven day itinerary are far better off just doing Haiyang. Skip Sapa, don't worry about it. If you have spare time, then you should be venturing into the northeast to see Banyok Waterfall. When you are on a motorbike, the northwest, which includes Sapa, is only worth venturing to if you have a multi-week holiday in the north of Vietnam. How to get a hotel in the north of Vietnam First of all, don't book hotels in advance because you won't keep to your itinerary. When the day is reaching a close, usually around 3 p.m., it is time to plan your night's rest. You can use Agoda, Booking.com, or just Google Maps to look for the nearest town, roll up and get a room. Homestays are popular in the north. I define a homestay as a place where you sleep in a family house and have dinner with the family. In recent years though, hotels are now marketing themselves as homestays. And so the idea of what is a homestay is becoming a bit confusing. So look at reviews carefully when looking for a real homestay. Accommodation can also be pretty rough in the north. Hard mattresses are common to the point that a concrete floor may feel softer. That's not a joke. And what I've done is stolen the soft mattress or something. Off a different bed. Pure genius. Overall though, it is easy to get a bed even in remote locations. 
The Fancy Ban train. The Fancy Ban Express train is a train that connects Hanoi to Lao Cai. It is an overnight train. In my opinion, it is not worth taking this train. Lao Cai still requires a one day drive of not great driving to get to Haiyang. So you've had a rough night on a train and now you still need to drive one day to get to Haiyang. Why not just drive Hanoi to Haiyang directly instead? If you are interested in this train service though, Vietnam Coracle covers it in great depth. My final thoughts on the North. The North is beautiful, but it is not for the casual rider. A combination of remote mountain roads, variable weather conditions, and a lack of a set itinerary makes this area a fairly hard place to travel. You need to be an experienced motorcyclist or an experienced traveler, but preferably both. There are areas of Vietnam that are also beautiful, but much easier to drive and less dependent on the weather for enjoyment. For example, the Ho Chi Minh Road. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.